Yeah, all the information you can't find in yep. the world. Uh, anyway, who is with me? This is Knockback. Thanks Hi, very guys. much. You are, I think, our longest standing consistent developer on DDO. Yes, I'm the longest continuously running dev on DDO. And that's uh, because you've been here since when? I've been here since 2008, and mod. The, I came in at the very end of Mod 8. What was that? Prisoners of Prophecy. Uh, Reaver's Reach. Oh, Reaver's Reach? Yep. Okay. Yep. okay, okay. And cool. sort of the first week I got here, like, I was fixing text in Reaver's Reach. Okay, cool. And since then, you have been... Uh, lately, a content lead, and even back in 2008, you've done a lot of the dungeons. I mean, the number of dungeons you've had a hand in in this game, do you even have a number? I started counting this morning, and I had to give up because I had to do it. I had other things to do. But, you know, I've worked on, as of now, 31 updates, uh, and I've touched a dungeon in at least 30 of those. So I've been involved in at least 30 dungeons and probably more. Um, so I've done things like the Snitch and a study in Sable in terms of dungeons. Uh, I've done public areas like House Caneth and Evening Star. Uh, lately I've done things like Multitude of Menace and Epic Shroud and the Anniversary Dungeon. Nice. Nice. All right, I'm uh, going to quick cycle through my audio. So when you say you've uh, worked on 30-some dungeons, a lot of it was a team-based effort, but not always. Not always. Some dungeons, yeah. you know, I did start to finish, like... Uh, Power Up or Army of Shadow. Uh, other dungeons like Study and Sable or Come Out and Slay. Uh, I would do the sort of story monster placement -y part and somebody else would do the uh, actual level building like Keeper, for example. You know, it's interesting. We've heard a lot this year because of the various things going on in the pen and paper version of Ravenloft. In some ways, you did that in Study and Sable. That was kind of part of the idea, right? It, was, it wasn't quite the idea because we didn't want to go to Wizards of the Coast and say we're doing Ravenloft. Uh, you know, uh, that was not on our agenda. Our agenda was actually to do uh, a dungeon out of another Hasbro property inspired by another Hasbro property namely Clue. Uh, oh, right, right. We always talked about how we wanted to do a dungeon based on Clue and that turned into a discussion of the uh, party game uh, Mafia or uh, Werewolf uh, and that turned into a murder mystery dungeon set in a mansion and when we're like who would you find in a murder mystery set in a mansion you would find a vampire. Uh, so, the similarities to Ravenloft kind of crept in over time. Uh, but once we figured out that's what was going on, we tried to make our, our guy different. So, uh, unlike Strahd, who is pining for his lost love, uh, our vampire, like, dumped uh, the woman at the start of the quest. Uh, and she's out for revenge. Cool. cool. So, you are our preeminent expert on world builder at this point for DDO. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you know, currently working on DDO, perhaps certainly not in the building. Uh, so, can you assign? I don't know that there is an average dungeon, but if you were to kind of picture an average dungeon. How many work hours does it take to make one? It takes us sort of 10 weeks to make a dungeon. Um, different dungeons take different amounts of time. Temple of Elemental Evil took a lot of time for many developers. But if you take one developer and say make a, a dungeon 
like we make nowadays, start to finish, it's it's ten weeks. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have a favorite child? Uh, two, I have two. Yep. I, I love all my children, but I, but I love some more than others. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the two that stick out are Study and Sable because we threw in all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one that stands out is Come Out and Slay, oh. uh, which is the end of the Sharn Syndicate line. And the reason that sticks out is we were going free to play, and at the moment we made Come Out and Slay, we didn't have an art budget. Uh, so we were trying to figure out ways to make Dungeons that felt fresh and new and different without any new art. Yeah. And because DDO had climbing and jumping built in, I thought, well, we should make a dungeon that's about climbing and jumping over the uh, roofs of Stormreach. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. Uh, so I was talking to Keeper about that, and I said, okay, I want to have a dungeon where the second half of the dungeon is running around on roofs. And she's like, really? <laughs> But she jumped on it, and that was really the, the first dungeon like that in DDO. If, there, if you're playing a dungeon in DDO and you're running around on a rooftop, I was probably involved in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Including Inspired Quarter, maybe? Uh, uh, yeah, well... a lot of running in the right. roofs on there. So uh, after we did Come Out and Slay, uh, Keeper really got into it and added a whole bunch of rooftop gameplay to the public areas. Uh, which we used to our advantage for uh, the Easter Egg Festival nice. uh, in the marketplace. I, uh, let's see, what, um, it's one of my personal favorite dungeons, and I know that you had a hand in the creation of that one. So. Yeah, so for that, you know, I sat down with Keeper and gave her an outline of what the level was supposed to be like. It's basically a giant U, uh, and then there's a secret passage that links the two uh, horns of the U together. Uh, and then she went off and worked her magic. I remember this was, we, we don't really do them anymore, but we used to have kind of show and tell days on the development team where we'd all go into a room, generally every couple of weeks, yeah. and it would just sort of be, here's what I've been working on. And I remember that at the time, you were like, well, he's a beholder in disguise because he's wearing a hat. <laughs> and nobody can tell he's a beholder because he has a hat on. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that was... So, my two great discoveries for that, that were necessary to make that dungeon were that I could put hats on things, which Eladrin discovered with headcrab. Well, Eladrin told me about when we did headcrabs yep. for the Inspired Quarter. Uh, so I figured out how to put hats on things, and then I figured out how to cut off heads. So the end boss in Missing is a Warforged with a Beholder wearing a hat on it. Uh, well, well, technically, the Beholder is wearing the Warforged right. uh, as, his, as his disguise. Um, let's see. Uh, most recently, like I said, most recently you've... Uh, formal title or just unofficial title in terms of like content lead uh unofficial yeah okay uh technically i am staff okay all right which is better than senior go figure <laughs> but you've had a, a a real lead role in a lot of the recent adventure packs yep and that's got to yep. be pretty exciting to to take that knowledge that you've been building over the years and really get more and more ability to to guide that sort of process yeah it was fun to do the last year with the storyline involving the devils uh, both because it gave us a chance to revisit the Devils, uh, who were so important to the Marketplace event, uh, but also because we got to go back in the Devil's Gambit to some fun locations in Stormreach, uh, like House Caneth, uh, or find out where the gatekeepers are hanging out, for example. Uh, and also do some fun bosses uh, uh, in, that, in that pack. Uh, the Rocking Dead is in chat. Uh, which, hey, by Rocking the way, Dead. Hey, Rocking Dead. Nice to see you. Uh, you know, I've, we've been chatting a little bit in chat, but I just wanted to call you out actually on the show here, saying it's an honor to have you in our chat room here. Uh, did you do Kratos? I did Kratos. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so as I said, Eladrin taught me how to put hats on things. So what I did is I took an Iron Golem and I made the Iron Golem invisible, 
and put many crate hats on him. Uh, so a crate for a head, a crate for a foot, a crate for an arm, and so on, uh, to create Kratos. And uh, then had the brainwave of saying if he was knocked down, it would just look like a bunch of crates lying there. So during one of the show and tells, uh, I showed off Kratos, and that was definitely the biggest response any, any monster I made uh, uh, ever got in a uh, show and tell. I think it's just because, I mean, well, part of it is because he's called Kratos, which is just hilarious. And then part of it is that we've been, you know, destroying boxes for years, right. and it's not all that often that the boxes fight back. That's right, that's yeah. right. Although, you know, they should. They've taken a lot of abuse. <laughs> they sure have. Why do we destroy all these boxes in DVM? Uh, clearly because they've wronged us in some way and need to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Makes sense. But, yeah... Uh, they're, they're, they're mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore. Uh, that's also true of the Kobolds, as you'll find out in the uh, Anniversary Dungeon. That's true. So, uh, I don't know. If you could, regardless... You see, you, the thing is, you know all the tech. You know how it works. You kind of have a pretty good idea what we can and can't do within the limitations of the DDO uh, World Builder tool. If that didn't exist, what would you make and what would it be? Oh, man. Yes, uh, I was saying just uh, the other day, don't ask me what I want, because usually the question is, what can you get done in the next 10 weeks? Right. That's, that's how long we have. <laughs> uh, uh, what in Dungeons and Dragons would I make if I could do anything? I would make Water Deep. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, I would make... a a proper really big city that was not broken up into zones. Um, we kind of tried to do that with Wayloon, mm -hmm. but Wayloon was so combat intensive that uh, you never really got any breathing space. It was very much a fight, fight, fight sort of environment. What I'd like to do is an environment where, just as in a pen and paper D&D game, you can do some fighting in the slums and then go have a drink and then go talk to the nobles and hang out in the aristocratic area, all without having to leave the level, right? Right, uh, right. And, right. of course, you would run across the rooftops. <laughs> For sure. All right, well, thanks very much, Knockback. I appreciate yep. you uh, stopping by. Wishing us a happy 10th anniversary. Happy anniversary, guys. All right, thank you.